Whopper, a bit of a cool down after the very action-y uh, Deus Ex block. I hope there's still some people watching. <laughs> Woo -hoo! So this is, this is less for the action and more for the brain. Um, uh, timing begins with the first movement. I will give you a countdown, so I will click on begin. Don't freak out when I don't give a timer. Before we start, I want you to admire the art style of the game, especially in this skippable cutscenes. Hang on, we will just look at this. The whole uh, art, you will see, this is actually a can of food that was modeled into a spaceship. So the, the artistic team for this game, they, they uh, modeled all the props and the models for the game out of real life uh, uh, clay and stones and, and stuff they found around. So this is actually a graphical achievement. Unfortunately, I have to turn down the graphics in this game a bit for our speed. The Swap is a game uh, from 2013. Uh, unfortunately, very unheard of, but it's actually quite good. All right, timing begins soon. Are you ready? Okay. Three, two, one, go. All right, as I said, the Swap is a game from 2013. It's kind of a Metroidvania puzzle game, and it, ha it has one of the best me puzzle mechanics I've ever seen in any 2D platformer, and I'm very sad that it's so overlooked because uh, the mechanic is actually quite good, and I wonder, yeah. Not used in any other game. So we see um, I'm bunny hopping here at the beginning, but I don't, won't use that very soon anymore because I'm getting the said mechanic. I'm going to explain really quick what it is. So basically, I'm getting this uh, swapper device, which is kind of a gun that lets me create up to four clones of myself. They completely mirror my movement. So uh, when I walk left, they walk left. When I jump, they jump, and so on. And later we get the ability to swap the playable character between one of the clones. So here you see me creating the first clone. Oh wow. Well. And now we're... Eh. This is actually the final boss of the game, this puzzle. Um, so. So far for the cloning, and soon we get the swapping, the mechanic the the game is uh, named after. So now you see, I can I can just swap around between the clones and uh, switch between the the one I control. You see there are uh, several lights in the environment. This is uh, a mechanic in the game that is used. Um, basically, the uh, blue lights prevent me from creating clones within this light, and the red lights prevent me from shooting my uh, swapper beam through those lights. Um, and the purple lights, they combine those effects between. Um, very straightforward. And these are the the only mechanics in the game, but they they combine for a very deep gameplay and interesting um, interesting uh, puzzle design. Right, that was the intro. Now we're going to start and solve some puzzles very soon. I have to collect 124 orbs in this game to, uh, uh, to beat it. This is actually all of the orbs in the game that there are. You can't miss a single one. There are no optional orbs, but there is uh, stuff like um, secret logbook entries you can find for a 100% run, which this is not, this is any percent, obviously. Oh wow, uh, you actually push boxes faster with your bum, but I I just can't get the freaking jump. If you're interested, interested to play this game casually, I can highly recommend it. And don't worry if you see the speed run, you won't get much. Uh, you will actually won't get anything at all of the story, and you will also not remember any of the puzzle solutions I do, so just uh, get it anyway. So here's a mechanic that was only recently find out, found out by the current world record holder, Septim Oven. Great shoutouts to him. That, um, oh nice, I messed up. That multiple clones push boxes uh, faster together. And when when he found that out, he wondered why nobody else has ever found that out before. Yeah. Excuse me, I'm kind of messing up a bit right now. Sorry, I I don't hear you. Nobody will notice. All right. 
Good idea. So whenever you see me here, we start from past, past checkpoint. What I do is uh, I skip a cutscene. Um, interestingly, there are some cutscenes that are not skippable but with this method, uh, even though they look in the game exactly like the others, which are skippable. Um, also, uh, the story in this game is quite good, even though we don't see much of it in the speedrun. The narrative designer is uh, Tom Hubert. He was also the narrative designer of uh, the Talos Principle. If you've heard of that game, it's, I guess, a bit more popular. So he's always uh, in for these deep philosophical games that uh, challenge the uh, dilemmas of the being a human or not a human. Come on. And as it was mentioned before, there is a bit war going for this game. This game has two endings. Uh, usually in speedruns we go for the suicide ending, but if you want to see the swapper ending instead, you can still donate uh, until, um, until the very last cutscene of the game. So you still have some time. Oh my god, and I just completely messed up this puzzle. To elaborate further on that bid war, um Suicide is currently at $11, and Swapper is at $53. So there's quite a gap there, but it's a very, very closable gap if you want to see the fast ending. Why did I just call the enemy? Um, oops. Uh, the method I use for transportation, by the way, we call blinking because we just uh, create a clone uh, far from us and then swap over to the clone. The speedrun of this game is actually very fun and super interesting and I can recommend uh, going for it to anybody who is interested. Unfortunately, up until uh, the last third of the game, it becomes cutscene heavy of unskippable cutscenes, unfortunately. But uh, the rest of the speedrun is, is really fun and intense and interesting because it, it requires lots of movement optimizations and swapping optimizations. And uh, I am actually at best a mediocre runner of this game yet, but I'm doing my very best. I've made huge, pro huge progress in the past weeks when I de-rusted. These shiny lights you see me walk through are checkpoints. That means the game gets saved, obviously, and all of the existing clones are getting erased. Whoa. Okay, whatever. Everybody wants answers, and I don't have any. They do. All right, there we go. So, um, even though this game is uh, kind of a Metroidvania, there are no upgrades I can collect during the gameplay. However, I can unlock uh, certain areas with um, uh, more orbs that I collect during the run. So, the more puzzles you solve, the more areas of the ship you can uh, access. However, as I mentioned in the beginning, you cannot skip any puzzles. You need to have all of the 124 orbs at the end of the game, no matter uh, how low percent you want to finish the game. At least not that we know of at the moment. And this is a, a core mechanic. Oh wow! Okay, mechanic that I just messed up. <laughs> um, core mechanic of the game is to solve some of the puzzles. You have to sacrifice your clones, and that's a very interesting um, concept because it is interwoven into the story of the game. Um, 
it makes you question your ethics. Is it okay to kill clones, which might be sentient, uh, just to progress? So as I said, the narrative designer is often participating in games with a deep philosophical question inside. But since this is a speedrun, we won't get much of the story anyway. And I'm even sacrificing even more clones, like right here. Can you swap? This is a bit tricky because um, swapping um, straight up above you is always harder because you have um, uh, it's harder to to hit your clone because uh, it, 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 he's uh, it is straight above you, and if you just swap to the side, you have more uh, more attack. Yeah, this is an unskippable cutscene, unfortunately. One of those I was talking about. If we could skip all of the cutscenes, the speedrun would be absolutely insane and amazing to do. But it's still very fun, and you can have a, have a little bit of a breather whenever you get through those. Who are you? I beg your pardon, this place changes people. My name is Chalmers. I worked here a long time ago. Oh, but I'm afraid I'm headed to the mine skylab with some urgency. I'll try to... Nice. Ah, there you are. Couldn't leave you for dead now, could we? Take the transport beam... If I do everything correctly here, it's possible to go through the space without triggering the message of the storm, but I don't... Oh, I have a way too bad angle. Yeah, there it is. It doesn't really save much time anyway. So, the interesting mechanic uh, for the relevant... Interesting relevant mechanic for speedruns is that um, to create clones, you have to wait for a certain... Uh, a number of frames of cooldown after um, uh, uh, creating the clone outline with your gun. So you can't just create clone swap, cl create clone swap and so on all the time because um, you wouldn't create clones fast enough. Uh, so you need a certain rhythm to, to blink around. And uh, interestingly, the world, current world record holder, Scepter Muffin, he doesn't play the game with a mouse, but instead he uses a graphical tablet, so he can coordinate the, the inputs a bit better. So I hate this puzzle. So there come in any donations, just uh, tell me, and it should usually be a good time, always. But I do understand that after such an intense block like GSX, oops, that was not where I wanted to go yet. Everything's very quiet here. 
here at the donation station. Yeah, they need to need to breathe after DSX. Why do this? Okay, here's a nice, and I messed it up. But there is a glitch in this game that you can abuse to solve this puzzle fast. You're not supposed to. You can see. Uh, you're, not, not, you're not supposed to shoot through the red light here. However, I the hitbox of the light here is um, doesn't go on top, and I can just shoot through the the left light here, which makes this puzzle a lot faster. Uh, okay. What's really nice about this game is the background soundtrack is really atmospheric, so it uh, fits really good into the game. Yeah, musically the game is is quite good, and especially the sound design as well. It fits uh, uh, the whole moody and, and dark atmosphere, and uh, it's a great sound design and music in general. So in case you haven't noticed, these big portals are teleporters where I can use to uh, fast travel through the ship into rooms I have already discovered. Here we are swapping through space, space with no gravity. Personally, we bet the portals to get the big ones are uh, Easter egg for the serious target. For the what? For the serious target. <laughs> That's not improbable. So that's the head, and you see this was modeled out of clay. I'm always amazed when I look at the art style of the game. And if you want to pick it up casually, just do it. And if you then decide to speed on it, just do that as well. Our community is very, very small, even though I think this is an excellent speed game and uh, a perfect balance between skill, memorization, and general fun and atmosphere. Is it? What's up? We're actually quite far ahead of schedule at the moment, so how do you fancy running 140 after this? Oh dear! Oh yes! <laughs> Uh, are you serious? Um, I am rusty as funk, but uh, <laughs> I would gladly do it. Is that pretty please? What would be your estimate? 
Um, an absolutely rustiness uh, estimate would be 20 minutes uh, real time. We can do 20 minutes. 140 for the former world record holder, nice. Yeah, I was actually planning to take a break from 140 until May, but, uh, well. Not today? Nope, not today, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no getting out of it like that. I always wanted to run that game at a marathon, so, wow. N nice surprise. Almost like a birthday present, but that's still a week away for me. It's an early birthday present. <laughs> 1-4 is a good game. I'm looking forward to seeing it in a speedrun context, so... Hype! It is a good game. Also, I'm sorry for not talking much at the moment, because there is uh, stuff I need to focus on. Here, for example, we, I just entered a room um, just um, to trigger the teleport uh, to have it later. To make things faster. Because this is obviously a speedrun. No, 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 ah. Um, you need to know when you uh, swap, you see there's always, you have to shoot your clones with the swapper beam before you can actually swap between the clones. So there are a few frames when the beam is still in the air. And when your active clone dies, before that beam has reached the clone you wanted to swap into, I just colossally messed up, um, you will die, so you will have to time uh, time it, especially when you're swapping from midair, and try to uh, save you from fall damage. Also, this game has excellent voice acting, which we don't... Well, we're actually, we do hear some of it. And there's a very important scene later where I have to ask everybody in chat to participate. But I will give you the exact instructions that you need. Yeah. For some reason, these scenes we cannot skip by um, just reloading the path checkpoint. But there's... Uh, the one before, we could just... Um, Activate the panel, reload the last checkpoint, and the cutscene would have been skipped. But here, the the checkpoint uh, was apparently set after playing the cutscene, as opposed to after activating the panel. Can you swap? Thank you. Good. Now we're inside the meteorite, and this is excellent sound design because you hear a deep rumbling frequency, and you s you know something is not so super right. This puzzle. Took me ages in my first casual playthrough, and I've died. Several PBs have died to it. Come on, for me. It's not been easy working with that woman, you know. Yeah, don't underestimate the uh, puzzles. Even he makes it look very easy. Trust me, it's not. Yeah, and as I said, uh, if you're interested to play it casually, don't worry, you will not remember any of the solutions that you see here today anyway. Uh, nice. Close one. No! Yeah, oh, why am I upset down? Okay, landing gear is moving into position. Trajectory is obvious. Disengage the remaining panel. Can you? Oh no.
Right, we're going to the last set of puzzles. And as I said, unfortunately, after we've done all of the puzzles, so the, the relevant part of the speedrun, there is still lots of uh, story relevant stuff we cannot skip, unfortunately. Can you please? Thank you. Oh, nice. I got it to swap past these gravity changing fields. Oh, yeah, you see, um, hang on. This puzzle can be a bit of annoying. This also took a very long time to solve when I first did it casually. And it has also killed a PB for me once. Uh, Alright, I have 124 orbs, that means I didn't miss a single puzzle, which is good, so otherwise I would have to hunt down which one I had forgotten. Whoopsie. Alright. So the rest is just uh, story time. Just tell me if a donation come, comes in. It should be a good time from now on any, any time until the end. No donations in yet? Oh. I, I take that back. I beg your pardon. There's a five dollar donation in from nice. Wonder J13, who says I voted five dollars for suicide. Wonder J, good luck, Zet. I'm glad to see 140 is about to be ran. Yeah, me too. He's a member of the of the 140 community. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Uh. All right, let's deactivate this function once and for all. That's what you get if you rebind uh, interact to the shift key of your keyboard. <laughs> Just ask Firepaw. <laughs> you had the same problem earlier in Undertale. <laughs> yeah, I, re I remember. <laughs> there's, a, there's a very important stuff you need to hear in this text very soon and I, you, you need to post a certain sentence in chat. I'm going to give you instructions. So listen closely to what they say. Not yet yet. No. Um, I can't skip this cutscene so I'm sorry. It's kind of convenient that Wonder J13 mentioned the the bed war in, in that in that comment there because there is still time to influence that. Tell me who just Swapper is currently winning by a good forty bucks, but still. Now listen closely to what they say. I have a rescue team on the way. They'll be here in a day. And please spam it afterwards. Why not? There's a lifeboat on this station that will kill us in a matter of hours. And you just don't see Hang on. Almost there. We were safe in here for decades. There must be something we can do. There might be, but not like this. And now you have to use the device to release me. I gave you the instruction in the chat. Not like this. It's not as simple as that. 
Oh, Sepp is in the chat, the world record holder. Nice. All right, chat, do your thing. Also, you still have time to influence the ending. Uh, still some time to go. And here's another cutscene coming in. Um, there was a very, very risky elevator skip after this cutscene that if you failed it, you would have to watch, re-watch this whole cutscene again. <laughs> and it would have saved about five seconds if you got it. Um, but Sepp uh, fortunately found a new method, uh, which is firstly safer and secondly also faster than the old method. So um, we don't have to go for the risky strat. So there is no need for me to try and demonstrate it for you now. No risky spread by the thumb. After all these years, you still cling to these dogmatic intuitions about the soul. The device doesn't work like that. You wanted to swap with the head watcher and take control. It would have destroyed you. I don't believe you can adequately explain how you know that. So I defer to the simplest explanation. Not a soul. So the story is kind of that there is these stone beings found on that distant planet, distant planet, and it was found that they are alive and can think, and then this thought process they found out was used to develop the swapper device, and uh, then a tragic event happened on this space station where I am right now. So this is uh, now I can safely swap up the elevator. So you might have realized that every time the, the red outline of the clone appears, so when I can uh, um, create clones, uh, there is a, cool, uh, a slowdown in the, in the environment. And um, especially if you are falling down, you can uh, prevent uh, you can think a bit where you set your clone before you smash into the ground. So this is quite useful. However, directly after this cutscene, the slowdown function in the world doesn't work because slowdown during cutscenes is deactivated. So you would have tried to blink up the elevator shaft without slowdown and um, would have been very easy to, um, to uh, mess it up. Okay. The bit war will be closed in about a minute. So here I once had a glitch happening to me once uh, that I, after this cutscene, directly spawn could walk out of the, the, the wrecked ship here, but um, I've never gotten it since. I have no idea what I did, but um, if you're interested to find out, please join the Swapper speedrunning community and help us uh, deciphering this uh, unknown glitch that I got. All right, um, be prepared to uh, close the gates for the bid war when the last cutscene st starts. Preparing to close the bed war. And now close the gates. What ending are we going to see? The bed war is closed and the winner is... Swapper. Woo! Good choice, people, because this is the ending you won't see usually in speedruns. Your wish became true. <laughs> so time will be when I um, swap over from uh, the playable character to the character on the other side of the cliff. But after that cutscene... 
think we might be a few nanoseconds above estimate, but... <laughs> Overestimate and 140. <laughs> Kappa. And time. So, okay, still an estimate, yes! All right. I like to call this ending the moonwalk ending because I just uh, love the, the backwards walking animation of this guy and just disturb my crew members on the ship. She's getting suspicious. He doesn't seem himself. What? No, he's himself. Yes. And there we go. That's the swapper for you. Thanks for watching.